never tell the world is that yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. One more time. Yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. Alright, so that's the English version. And we're hoping that goes viral in the English-speaking world, but for the Latinas and Latinos in uh, Latin America, we have uh, Fabian who's, who's uh, translated it into Spanish for us. So here we go in Espanol. One, two, three. No queremos piratas bananos. Piratas fuera de aquí. No queremos piratas bananos. Piratas bananos de aquí. No queremos piratas bananos. Piratas bananos aquí. No queremos piratas bananos. Piratas fuera de aquí. Alright. Now finally, Swahili. Now we've recorded these uh, at lunchtime and hopefully they'll, I'm sure they'll be up on the website, on YouTube and uh, available to send around the world. So please support the banana, anti-GMO banana campaign and spread this simple song and uh, teach it to your friends and people or translate it to your language and we'll get it out there. Okay, so our first attempt at singing in Swahili. <laughs> Una una ninguém já fez isso. Os ilindena cruzem para lá. A tua vida é toda sobre mim. Uma boa coisa que eu faço. Vamos fazer isso aqui. Una una ninguém já fez isso. Os ilindena cruzem para lá. A tua vida é toda de lixo na sala. Una una uma coisa que eu faço. No queremos piratas bananos, piratas fuera de aquí. No queremos piratas bananos, piratas bananos de aquí. No queremos piratas bananos, piratas fuera de aquí. No queremos piratas bananos, piratas fuera de aquí. Now finally, Swahili. Now we've recorded these uh, at lunchtime and hopefully they'll, I'm sure they'll be up on the website, on YouTube and uh, available to send around the world. So please. But first, there is debate raging around the world about the merits of genetically modified foods. Some see it as a possible saviour for mankind. Others see it very differently. And one of the most intense discussions at the moment involves bananas that are actually grown in far north Queensland on the Cassowary Coast. Over recent years, scientists from the Queensland University of Technology have modified bananas to have higher levels of pro-vitamin A. The bananas are grown at a trial plot at South Johnston, but they are not designed to be eaten by Australians. Queensland University of Technology professor James Dale is the project leader on this one. I'll let him explain. It's part of the um, Grand Challenges in Global Health program from the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. And one of the grand challenges that they put forward was to uh, develop staple crops with, a, with um, increased micronutrients. Because one, one of the really big public health problems in the world are micronutrient deficiencies, and they're particularly in developing countries. Um, and that's despite you know, wonderful strategies such as food fortification and, and supplements, it's just that they don't get to a lot of people that really need it, particularly the poorest of the poor. So the idea was to generate staple food crops that actually contain these micronutrients and 
the two major ones are, are pro-vitamin A or beta-carotene and, and iron. So our project has been, and this is particularly for East Africa where the staple food is bananas, and these are cooking bananas. Um, our project has been to develop uh, the local bananas but with dramatically increased pro-vitamin A and iron. Uh, so that was that, that was the genesis of the project. You have been trialling these bananas or growing them in North Queensland now for a number of years. How did the growing stage trials go? Oh, really well. Um, so what we've done, and, and we, we wanted to work out which genes we needed to use to be able to increase, and particularly the pro-vitamin A, and, and we were able to find a, um, a banana from, from Papua New Guinea called Asapena, um, which has naturally very, very high levels of, of pro-vitamin A. And we were able to take a gene from Asapena and put it into, and we use Cavendish as the sort of model. And we were able to, to get way over target. Our target was a, a, a level of, of, of pro-vitamin A. Um, it was actually 20 micrograms per gram. Uh, we had bananas growing up in North Queensland with, with over 70. So we were way over target. So that, that's allowed us to do two things in North Queensland. One is to identify the banana gene that we wanted to use and also to, to um, make sure that these bananas, the stability of that, um, of that trait in the bananas uh, was uh, durable over many, many seasons and, and that's gone ahead. Now uh, we're actually to the stage where the bananas are at the human trial stage, but they're not being conducted in Australia, that research, is it? No, no, it's, it's um, being done over in the US at um, Iowa State University where they've got extensive uh, experience with doing these, um, these nutritional studies. It's, it's, not a, it's a nutritional study rather than anything else. And, and the idea of that nutritional study is to determine in humans, we've done it in, in, in um, Mongolian gerbils before, but not in humans, to uh, determine exactly how efficiently um, humans convert, can convert the pro-vitamin A uh, to, to vitamin A. That's what the nutritional study is for. And the idea of that, that tells us exactly how much of our bananas people will need to consume to get, um, to get 50% of their daily requirement. So the, the university students these, uh, that are going to be eating these bananas or that may well already have eaten the bananas, are they going to be eating the ones from here, from, from North Queensland, the ones grown here? Yes, indeed. So we actually shipped them over to, to, um, to Iowa State University, which was quite a challenge to get, um, get bananas harvested in North Queensland down to Brisbane for, to test the level of pro-vitamin A and then shipped over to Iowa State without them ripening. Trial and error, I would imagine. <laughs> well, it was certainly a trial. <laughs> yeah. and, and are they now in America? Are they now being consumed? They're in America, so one of the important things is that this is a um, this is obviously a blind study. We're we're not involved in it. We provide we provide the bananas. We know that all of the approvals have gone through in um, in the US, and uh, what we will hear next is when that's when that's all completed. Where, where to from there then? Um, so that's that's only obviously very minor part of the project. That's really just to make sure that we've got. Uh, or to determine the exact level that people would need need to eat. Um, the really important part of the project now is is the developmental field trial in Uganda, where we've got these genes in in the local bananas, and it was our our Ugandan collaborators that did that. Um, and so these genes are now in the local bananas; they're in the field, and we're selecting out the lines that will ultimately go through for um, for release to farmers. It is 11 minutes past four on ABC Far North and 6.30 ABC North Queensland. We're talking genetically modified bananas. That was Professor James Dale from the Centre for Tropical Crops and Biodiversity at the Queensland University of Technology. Now, the human testing of these genetically modified bananas in America has created a real stir. A petition has been signed by over 57,000 people around the world calling for those trials to be aborted. One local food grower who is dead against the GM bananas is a lady called Lisa. She's from a group called the Seed Savers Network, which aims to preserve the natural ge genetic diversity of our food plants. And I had a chat to her about her concerns. Well, there are many, many people in Uganda that are very much against 
genetically modified organisms coming into their country. There are large movements of people over there also trying to keep GMOs out of Africa. And a lot of people actually see the genetically modified banana as another um, bit of corporate trickery to get um, GMOs into Africa because it's not actually a seed. A lot of people didn't want the seeds there. So I guess what we need to look at is the focus has shifted from India and gone to Africa. You don't really hear much about the um, iron-rich GMO bananas these days. The focus is very much on, on the bananas for Africa. I just see inconsistencies in the marketing, I guess, the marketing of the idea. And I can see so much money going into the development of these genetically modified bananas and other crops. But the researchers are saying that they're doing a good thing here, that they're trying to address an issue that kills so many people in eastern Africa, a vitamin A deficiency. Well, it's a really interesting um, selling point and there's a lot of money to be made from genetically modified crops. A GMO banana, when you look at bananas, they're one of the main crops in the world. There's hundreds of different varieties of bananas that have, um, you know, some of them already have very high amounts of beta carotene. In fact, there is another issue here, and that is of uh, biopiracy. There are particular uh, bananas in Micronesia, I think, that have a lot of um, beta carotene, and so they've actually gone and taken the genes from those bananas that that already have high beta carotene and yeah it seems to me more of an issue of actually patenting a product and I do honestly feel from my heart that if people were actually interested in people's health that they would spend time with those people on the ground in the farmlands like Vandana Shiva and many, many other people, the permaculture movement, spending time with the people on the land so that they can teach people how to teach other people how to grow nutrient-rich, biodiverse food systems, which also build up their soil and protect their waterways. This year, uh, there has been quite a lot of hullabaloo in the US relating to the genetically modified bananas. What's the public sentiment been like about Iowa State University trying to get students to eat these bananas? Well, the Iowa State University put out some advertisements to for 12 young women. Now, that, for me, is, is an issue in itself. Why 12 young women? So 12 young women to eat three bananas a day um, in exchange for $900. This is what they're calling human testing for the GMO bananas. It raises a lot of questions. The women that are, are meant to be doing this, what else are they eating? What sort of testing are they doing on what else they're eating? Would anybody consider that um, 12 people eating three bananas a day would be anywhere near sufficient to be testing things on human beings for for uh, mass release in an African country, you know, you're, you're, you're offering $900 to people that are going to uni. Quite a lot of uni students have got big university debts and things like that. It kind of feels t to me uh, like you would be after the people who have very little interest in their health and perhaps more interested in the $900 and how much information are these people getting. Just in the last couple of weeks, Vandana Shiva has you been... remind us who she is again? So Vandana Shiva is a global food sovereignty and seed sovereignty advocate. So Vandana, has a, Vandana Shiva has the Navdania uh, Seed Bank and um, that's one of the largest seed banks in the world. Um, there are a lot of seed banks in the world. 
Um, she also travels around. She's uh, written a lot of books. One that I've read recently is a book called Making Peace with the Earth. I'm going to tell the world that yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. One more time. Yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. All right, so that's the English version. And we're hoping that goes viral in the English-speaking world, but for the Latinas and Latinos in uh, Latin America, we have uh, Fabian who's, who's uh, translated it into Spanish for us. So here we go in Espanol. One, two, three. No queremos piratas bananos, piratas fuera de aquí. No queremos piratas bananos, piratas fuera de aquí. One more time. No queremos piratas bananos, piratas fuera de aquí. No queremos piratas bananas, piratas fuera de aquí. Alright. Now finally, Swahili. Now we've recorded these uh, at lunchtime and hopefully they'll, I'm sure they'll be up on the website, on YouTube and uh, available to send around the world. So please support the banana and the other the world. But yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. One more time. Yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. Alright, so that's the English version. And we're hoping that goes viral in the English-speaking world, but for the Latinas and Latinos in uh, Latin America, we have uh, Fabian who's, who's uh, translated it into Spanish for us. So here we go in Espanol. One, two, three. No queremos piratas bananos, piratas fuera de aquí. No queremos piratas bananos, piratas fuera de aquí. No queremos piratas bananos. Piratas fuera de aquí. No queremos piratas bananas. Piratas fuera de aquí. Alright. Now finally, Swahili. Now we've recorded these uh, at lunchtime and hopefully they'll, I'm sure they'll be up on the website, on YouTube and uh, available to send around the world. So please support the banana anti-GMO banana campaign and spread this simple song and uh, teach it to your friends and people or translate it to your language and we'll get it out there. Okay, so our first attempt at singing in Swahili. Oh, boy. Give me a couple guys.
that's the English version. And we're hoping that goes viral in the English-speaking world. But for the Latinas and Latinos in uh, Latin America, we have uh, Fabian, who's, who's uh, translated it into Spanish for us. So here we go in Espanol. Tell the word is that yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. One more time. Yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. All right, so that's the English version. We're hoping that goes viral in the English-speaking world, but for the Latinas and Latinos in uh, Latin America, we have uh, Fabian, who's, who's uh, translated it into Spanish for us. So here we go in Espanol. What we're going to tell the world is that yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. One more time. Yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. All right, so that's the English version. And we're hoping that goes viral in the English-speaking world. But for the Latinas and Latinos in uh, Latin America, we have uh, Fabian, who's, who's uh, translated it into Spanish for us. So here we go in Espanol. What we're going to tell the world is that yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. One more time. Yes, we have many bananas. We have many bananas today. We don't want your pirate bananas. Take your pirate bananas away. All right, so that's the English version. And we're hoping that goes viral in the English-speaking world. But for the Latinas and Latinos in uh, Latin America, we have uh, Fabian, who's, who's uh, translated it into Spanish for us. So here we go in Espanol. Thank <laughs> you.